Hello everyone and welcome back to Whiskey Wednesday. Today, something I sort of missed out on on the first time round, but now I'm here to talk to you about op uh, option 1.2. Option 1.1 with Elsa Bay pretty much looked the same as this, but it had a giant piece of granite in the stopper. Um, I think they've not done that with this one to make the, the different batches obviously look different. And I think, you know, shipping six bottles with six pieces of granite in the lid is probably also quite expensive. So 1.2, which is what this one is, doesn't have the granite. The label is a little bit cleaner. Uh, you can tell they've kind of looked at it and thought, how can it be cleaned up and made it a little bit more sleek? Um, but what is it? It is a whiskey distillery, a single malt distillery, inside a grain distillery. This is owned by William Grants, who owned Gervin Grain Distillery. Uh, and this is made near Elsa Craig, which is a granite uh, rock quarry. That's difficult to say, granite rock quarry. And this was made many years ago. It was, uh, the, dis the single malt distillery was actually designed to make a balvenny like distillate for the use in the Grant's blended whiskies. Started experimenting, started peating stuff. Brian Kinsman, who's the malt master at Glenfiddich, got involved, started doing some cool stuff with it. Um, but the most important part, uh, you know, it's natural color, it's natural filtered. It's 48.9%, which is a nice ABV. I think of it as like a baby Talisker, which we'll talk about more later on. But it measures both PPM and SPPM. Now, in terms of peat level, it's 22, I believe. 22 phenol parts per million. I think Talisker's like 25, Bowmore's about 25, so it's in that area. And as I said, it reminds me a lot of Talisker, but sweeter. But it also has an SPPM level, a sweet phenol parts per million level. I don't know what those phenols are, but it has been distilled specifically to that level for specific reasons. Uh, so on the front of it, you'll see 22 ppm and 19 s ppm. So it's been micro matured, but that's not one of those phrases you can throw around like craft or boutique. It's genuinely been matured in quarter casks. Some of the oak influences come from refill barrels as well as virgin oak, um, which ticks all my boxes and it's peated too. So, you know, keep on going, keep on going, keep on going. Uh, like I said, this is released 1.2. It's been doing really well and has gained a cult following. Some people prefer 1.1. I actually prefer 1.2, but we'll dive into it and we'll tell you a little bit more about it, uh, mainly what it smells like. There's an instant hit of like Talisker sea salt. Coastal washes, uh, you can like feel the sea hitting cliffs and you can get the salt in the air. You can kind of taste it on your lips. Counterbalance with that is some butterscotch, some toffee, some really nice thick caramel and milk chocolate notes. And then things like peppers, things like Szechuan peppers, pink peppercorns, it's spicy, but it's floral. It's really getting out there. So think of those multicolored peppercorns, you get green, pink, black, white, it's all that going on. There's elements of heat, there's elements of florality. That's definitely not a real word, but let's roll with it. And there's elements of kind of uh, just general sweetness too, but that isn't barrel influenced, almost like an earthy sweetness, like ginger or licorice, kind of like a ginger cake, like Jamaican ginger cake. There's like some kiddie kind of confectionery notes in there, like marshmallows and those kind of candy love heart sweets. Topped all off by a nice healthy amount of smoke, which is mainly that kind of barbecue-y, I use the phrase a lot, but like culinary smoke, it's like hickory, it's like wood smoke, it's less peat smoke, even though it is. There's a point where it's beginning to lean into almost medicinal territory. It's like just dipping its toe into that area. Most of its body's in the other end, sweet, floral, nice and approachable, but it does just dip its toe into that slightly medicinal smoke. Yeah, sweet, smoky, spicy, salty, peppery. And what do you want from a whiskey, right? And a cool bottle to boot. Very like mad science lovey. There is an instant dryness to it, which when you're dealing with smaller barrels, larger surface area for the whiskey, more of it can penetrate the oak and get more oaky flavors. 
Dryness should always be expected with quarter cast maturation, be it this, Laphroaig, some bourbons use it as well. Um, and then that kind of, imagine your tongue is kind of like a circle and the dryness runs through the middle of it. It's always there. It becomes kind of salty, very saline-like, and then it kind of becomes like a sweet dryness, like a, like a Riesling or a Sauternes or like a other kind of sweet dessert wines. And then from kind of the left and the right, you get this, this molding of that peppercorn vibe coming in, the smoke. Really kind of all dancing together on your palate, really bringing those flavors together. It's very unified. You know, there's nothing that sits astray, which is causing any problems for it. It's all very uniform, which is quite a nice thing in a whiskey with a lot going on. I couldn't really guess the age of it. Um, using quarter cask, giving it more oak, does diffuse the idea of age. If I was going to take a guess, probably anywhere from like 8 to about 12. I think it sits in that area quite nicely. There's still natural body to it, which is nice. Then the more you drink it, I personally start to pick up on that slightly medicinal note a little bit more. It becomes a little bit more Isla, a little bit more West Coast in its origin in terms of the peat, anyway, because it is from the west coast. It's about 60 pounds a bottle. It's nice and different, especially if you're a peated fan, because most peated whiskey fans, you, we've all tried everything, right? All around Isla, all the space sides that are heavily peated, the highlands, the lowlands now. But if you haven't tried this, it's probably worth kicking around. If you can get 1.1 and compare it to 1.2, totally worth doing. I do prefer this one because it's spicier, it's not as sweet. Um, I think the sweetness, on the sweetness on the first one was a bit too much for me. But I think this is delicious, and if you like peated whiskey, especially if you're a fan of Talisker and Kalila, and maybe some of the more intense Bonaharvin styles, I think this would be right up your street, and it's sort of in that price range as well, which is quite nice. Uh, in terms of scoring it, I think it's a solid 8. It is a beautifully well-rounded, balanced, nuanced, and unified product. Um, and for a company as big as William Grant's, having to produce what they produce to keep on making money and you know, to keep their brand ambassadors going and their distilleries. They've got a lot to deal with. To release something experimental is really fun and it keeps people like me interested and hopefully it keeps people like you interested too. But that's Elsa Bay 1.2, solid eight out of 10. Thank you all for watching and I will see you all next week. Thank you.